Hey guys, the end of 2021 is almost upon us, so I'm doing something I haven't actually really ever done before on this channel, the top 10 worst films of the year. Now, usually I avoid this because I kind of like to avoid that negative criticism despite what some of you may know of me from my latter reviews of shows like Supernatural. I want to talk about them this year, particularly because a lot of them were streaming service movies. Now obviously because of COVID-19, theaters were shut down and a lot of films just went straight to VOD, our streaming services. Here in Canada we had the theaters shut down for almost half the year, which was really really annoying because I wanted to go and see some goddamn movies. So a lot of the movies that I saw were off of streaming services, and a lot of them were garbage, but the problem is the easy access to this is what makes me worried about films in the future, and I'll talk about that later on. But anyways, let's get down to it. Let's start talking about the top 10 worst movies of 2021, starting with number 10. Reminisce. Now some of you might not even reminisce about this movie at all. I only do because I thought that this was going to be a really cool melt of Lisa Joy's writing and directing talents from Westworld. Honestly, this movie is just very forgettable despite its name. It's a noir story being told in the future, but an alternate future, but it's not even really that intuitive of a future. It's just a wet rag, funnily enough, because the whole world's flooded. You've seen these stories multiple times before, and the writing just isn't on par with what we got from the first season of Westworld, and I feel that the Lisa Joy creative talent is starting to run out. I think the tank is a little bit empty on her creative process, so unless something turns around, I think that this will also reflect on future seasons of Westworld. But technically speaking, that's already happening. Number nine, Escape Room Tournament of Champions. Now, I actually forgot I saw this movie. Hell, I even forgot I saw the first movie. I went and saw this film because it was one of the first movies I could see when going back to theaters. Yeah, it's not great. Sure, I gave the production design a point, but otherwise this is just a bare minimum value village version of the first movie in terms of any kind of originality and terms of any kind of care for the characters. You don't care about what's going on, some of the traps are kind of interesting, but it's definitely written by people who think escape rooms are cool but actually really don't do them themselves. I know that they're going to try and make another one, they're going to try and turn this into the Saw series, but lord I hope not. Number 8. Venom Let There Be Carnage. Holy shit, I groaned so much through this movie. Now obviously a superhero movie is kind of a low hanging fruit in terms of worst movies, but this one just is genuinely terrible. It's worse than the first movie, and the first movie is already bad enough as it is. Woody Harrelson as Carnage I thought was going to be a really good idea, and they didn't even commit to it. His character is a murderer and that's it. You get no real establishment of what makes his character so unique, what makes it so renowned throughout the entire comic industry. It just feels like this is trying to do the bare minimum in terms of trying to appease baseline Spider-Man slash Venom fans and it fails on every single level except for one funny joke at the end. But that does not excuse this movie from this list. Number 7, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Now actually, while I did enjoy watching this movie, it is bad, I'm not going to deny. It is a garbage fire. It does, technically speaking, follow a lot more of the lore and the story elements from the first two video games than any of the Paul W. S. Anderson movies, but that doesn't make it better. This film tries to cram in not only a ton of elements from those two movies, it also tries to cram in stuff that you wouldn't even think would work because it doesn't. There's that girl with a bag over her head who was in the remaster that my dad played on the GameCube and she's in this movie for no other reason to be a reference to the video game. And while they're trying to be super loyal to elements like that, they are also completely wrong with other elements like Leon S. Kennedy. His character in this film is terrible, not saying that the character itself is something to be lauded over, but what the hell? This is a complete opposite. But on top of that, there's some really bad horror elements, there's some really cheesy acting, the budget is on its sleeves. I still give it credit for trying to do what it did, but it cannot be denied that this is a very bad movie. Number six. The Tomorrow War. Now this is the beginning of my trend towards terrible streaming movies. This film feels like it was written back in the late 80s, early 90s, and they never updated the script up until the filming happened. I don't think they bothered at all. Such a bare bones, very basic, very stupid concept that any viewer watching can be like, hey, that's... That's really stupid. The idea of sending people forward into time to save a timeline when they should be preparing their own timeline. There's no really justifiable reason as to why they do it other than, yeah, we gotta go. I know that they think they had a cool idea in there, and maybe they might have, but in terms of execution, it's absolute dog shit. Number five, 
Snake Eyes. I didn't even review this movie. I basically saw it when I was on a trip on the island, and I just wanted to see something before I left that area. And so I went and saw Snake Eyes, and I didn't even have enough to talk about it when I got back home. For a film that had such a massive budget, you can't see shit that's happening in the fight scenes. And it also should be said that when the almost silent flashbacks from the previous G.I. Joe movies are a better Snake Eyes origin film than the actual Snake Eyes origin movie is, you have a problem. Especially when it's two hours long, you've got a bunch of indiscernible action and very non-committal, very uninteresting characters. You fucked up, bro. How can you make the G.I. Joe film with Channing Tatum look better than your movie? Number four, Fast 9. This was shit. This was just garbage. I've enjoyed this dead brain popcorn candy for the most part for the last few iterations. This one showed the lack of invest, the lack of intrigue, the lack of any kind of originality or any sort of feasibility or wanting to make an actually decent film on its sleeve because the whole movie is just tripe. I'm hoping that this series actually finally does die. How can you fuck up addressing the memes about this movie? They actually dipped into it and that made it worse. Uh. Number three, Army of the Dead. How the fuck did this movie get so much acclaim? How are we getting a Netflix series from this movie? How did this movie get talked about as much as it did? Not only by people who for some reason loved it, but also by people who hated it. I had people coming up to me months after the movie had ended still talking about it. I'm like, guys, this movie does not deserve that much credit. Why do you even bother to film a zombie movie in a nuked out, kind of post-apocalyptic Las Vegas on an aperture setting that you can't see past your character's ear. I do not understand that Zack Snyder's invest in that. Sure, it's cool that you've got a bunch of really expensive, really rare Japanese camera filters. Does that mean that you should use them to make your movie? Fucking no. Along with absolutely stupid characters, stupid writing, and just an ending that made you have no desire to watch any of the other ones, even though apparently there's going to be more. Yeah, this movie sucked. Really, really bad. Number two, Red Notice. How the fuck did this cost 200 million? How? Sure, I know that the cast got a huge amount of money, but that still doesn't explain where, like, another hundred, less than hundred million win. All the sets are fake as shit, all of the visual effects look like they're from PlayStation 3 graphics, and the film just has the most blandy mcblandy bland rock style blandy blandy bland movie of all time. It's just a bland 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 movie. Even Ryan Reynolds trying his hardest to be Deadpool without a mask on can't save this movie. And this movie was the most watched film in the entire streaming verse. And that should tell you why I'm so kind of upset with the way that films are going, especially with streaming services. But before that, I gotta talk to you about number one. Number one, without remorse. Do any of you remember this movie? This is a film that I actually have been really looking forward to because this was a film based off of a Tom Clancy novel that had been in development hell for near on 25 years. Michael B. Jordan had gotten attached to it. I had hope for this movie up until the first 10 minutes and then I realized I was in for an utter travesty. I don't know what happened. You have some of the best writers in the film industry right now in this film. You have one of the best actors in the film industry in this film. And it's just trite. It follows every single basic boring a military conspiracy film that you've seen a million times at this point. The action scenes are indiscernible, if not very poorly shot. You have characters that are wet cardboard cutouts of the people that they're meant to be. Sure, I knew that this film was not going to adapt the book at page to page. It's more so the character that is the more driving point, but they don't even do that. I feel that they just took the title and the name of the character and that was it. They didn't do anything else. For a film that was in development hell for so goddamn long to come out to be such a wet fart that not even Amazon wants to talk about it, despite the fact that they put a lot of fucking money into this movie, they would rather talk about The Tomorrow War, it kind of brings me to my point about where streaming services is right now. Streaming services used to be kind of the beacon 
weekend for filmmakers who couldn't get their films produced by big name studios because streaming services were far more willing to take a risk on these lower indie, somewhat unknown, somewhat kind of radical types of movies. And that was something that was really cool when this all got started. However, Netflix, Amazon, all of these guys now seem to be dipping into these buckets of dog shit movies because they know that the general masses who go and see the Transformer Michael Bay movies are far more willing to watch movies of that same caliber at home in their nachos. Netflix has even now dipped into the Hallmark Christmas movie thing. They've started making their own line of Netflix Hallmark Christmas movies because they know the masses will eat that shit up. To look at what streaming services used to be back when I was really getting into them back in the mid 2010s, to see them now is just a disservice and it's really hard for anyone to get excited about anything that comes out on a streaming service anymore. Anytime Netflix says they've got a movie coming out, I'm like, yeah, sure, all right, what? Mm -hmm. But anyways, guys, those are my top 10 worst movies of 2021. What are your top 10 worst? Give me your list in the comments below and let's talk about it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Top 10 best will be coming out tomorrow.